Ladies and gentlemen, members of uh, the European Parliament, and ladies and gentlemen who are present here, at last I was able to see Anna Nicholson by face. I am, uh, I've studied in England and uh, I was for a long time and I was a member of the Labour Party. I always followed the politics there. And before the invasion and occupation of Iraq, I vividly remember two women, Anne Cluid and Emma Nicholson. I've seen Anne Cluid before, now I see Emma Nicholson. I hope that they will endorse our problems and not just their agenda. Now, we come to the importance of Iraqi oil. Iraqi oil, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Iraq is a major oil country. It has the, actually, the third largest reserves of oil in the world. <coughs> Some people say it is the second because there is doubts about the Iranian figures of reserves. If the probable reserves of Iraq, which is 214 billion barrels, is added to the proven reserves, which is 115 billion barrels of today, Iraq will become first oil reserve country in the world. It is the most underexplored country as far as oil is concerned in the world. It produces the least ratio of reserve, of a production to reserves in the world. What I mean, that with 115 billion barrels of reserve, Iraq should be in the production a bracket between 6 to 8 million barrels per day. Iraq, in all its history, never uh, achieved more than 3.5 million barrels per day in 1979. Was Iraqi oil uh, one of the reasons of the occupation? Well, I will not be fair if I say it is the only reason, but it must have been a very prominent reason. Because towards the end of 2002, it was realized that when Iraq, the sanctions on Iraq was not working, it was eroding, and the whole United Nations infrastructure was under a threat by objections to that sanctions. So it should be lifted and lifted quickly. If the sanctions were lifted quickly and the regime of Saddam Hussein was still intact, it means Saddam Hussein will have the power to spend the money that is and the revenue obtained from oil. And the experience of 1991 shows that the Iraqi people, given money, can reconstruct their country very quickly, whether they agree with the leadership of Saddam Hussein or they don't. They will rebuild the, their country, they will move on, and Iraq will become again a major force. But then it will become a major force in the area under the power of Saddam Hussein, and that was or Arab nationalism, or whatever you call it, and that was not acceptable to the West. Iraq, because it was weakened during the sanctions years, 13 years of sanctions, and because of the destruction of part of its infrastructure, especially the military infrastructure, it was ready to fall by a small force of occupying power. And it approved it that 50 to 60,000 American soldiers walked all the way from the Kuwaiti border to Baghdad. So let's occupy this country. But what did the occupation result into? The Americans and the occupying powers thought they will keep the oil industry intact. And I have to tell you, they did not bomb any oil installations to keep it intact. But what happened after the occupation was an extensive looting and pillage that destroyed a lot of equipment and systems that deal with oil production. The damage was so bad 
that be, the two months before the war, we were producing 2.8 million barrels per day on average. And we haven't achieved that figure till today, six years later after the occupation. It's still hovering between 2.3 and 2.4 million barrels per day. Iraq, in 1991, when it invaded Kuwait and was forced out, it had to pay compensation for Kuwait. One of the biggest bill of comp compensation was called the Oil Opportunity Compensation, which Iraq paid $11 billion to Kuwait to compensate for the lost opportunity of six months during Iraqi occupation that they didn't produce oil as much as I would have to if there was no invasion. If that same formula is applied now to Iraq by the end of 2008, and Iraq was not invaded and kept to produce 2.8 million barrels per day, that was producing before the war, minus what it actually produced over these six years, Iraq have lost 53 billion dollars on the same basis of compensation. And if we calculate the amount of oil that was smuggled during these six years under the watchful eye of the man on the deck, which are the collision forces, it would be $11 billion. These are, these are incomes. This is money to the Iraqi people who you've seen as hospitals, you've seen as schools, you've seen the state of its infrastructure. I remember a story my nephew was telling me before the invasion that, why are you worried, uncle? It's America coming. You get engineers having laptops, and they just press a button, and a power station will be built. And they press another button, and a refinery will be built. And they press another button. Till now, there is no refinery being built. There is no power station being built over six years, although tens of billions of dollars went into what is called a reconstruction program. The situation is so bad that throughout the 13 years of sanction, we did not import one drop of oil products, not one single drop. Actually, we exported gas oil to Jordan, gas oil to Turkey, gas oil to Syria, liquefied petroleum gas to Syria, uh, and fuel oil to all neighboring countries. Of course, we exported the products outside the United Nations umbrella. But the fact we did, we, we exported them and we satisfied local demand at very cheap prices.